The humans welcomed us when we arrived on their world. They gave us tours of their most famous and prestigious places. We met their most famous and prestigious people. They showcased all of their architectural marvels. They showed us all of their fascinating technology. We marveled at their means of harnessing electricity to do their bidding in ways that we had never imagined. We marveled at the magical ingenuity needed to harness those elementals in such a way as to make rocks do their math for them. We marveled at how they managed to use brute force and raw heat to shape everything in their world to their whims. Truly, for a species so backwards in so many ways, astounding that they could achieve the greatness that they had managed to build such a worldwide travel and commerce network. When we asked them to see the mages behind all of their astounding engineering, they showed us tech wizards and artificers, neither of whom showed any magical prowess at all. They merely used the tools created by the true wizards, but were not the beings who imbued the tools with the elemental forces needed to work. When we explained what we wanted to the humans, they took us to massive facilities that they called power plants, and told us that the facilities were where the power came from to make the tools work. We tried again to explain that we sought the minds who enslaved the elemental energy into their tools to allow others to use the tools, not the tools themselves. One of their kind, a lower-ranking official, claimed to understand what we needed and suggested we go to a junior high and see a science project about the basics of electricity. We went with the officials only to discover the massive insult they were serving to us. They tried to explain that there was no magic, that they just made use of a basic force of the universe, and that the simple toys in front of them, which they used to entertain children, provided the foundational knowledge we needed to understand that they did not have any wizards who imbued our tools with the captured elementals of the magical realm to make their tools work. We could not suffer such insolence and insulting behavior, and we left, calling for our retrieval packs to whisk us away from this junior high and return us to the ship we had parked in their park. We crystal calmed the homeworld with the update on our situation, and they, too, thought the hubris of the humans to be unexpected and unacceptable. War was declared upon the human world for the gravest of insults they had issued to us. Clearly, their wizards numbered so few and were such a secret that they had to keep them hidden and safely sheltered from all others. Our tacticians estimated that, given how few wizards the humans must have, they should be easy to conquer, and then we would force them to reveal those who had harnessed all of their magical forces to shape their world. We would share our knowledge with them and make them share their knowledge with us. We would show them how to be good interstellar neighbors in the spirit of cooperation, but only after they had paid for their insolence and lies. They clearly were an upstart and arrogant race who needed to be broken before they could join the greater community of worlds. The war has been raging for five years. We are unable to establish a beachhead on the human world and cannot make a tellering to enable a massive ground troop invasion. But even if we were, I'm not sure it would be effective. Our soldiers are equipped with the standard of our invasion forces, each platoon being assigned one combat mage, ten archers, three combat medics, fifteen spearmen, and twenty-foot infantry. They are equipped with the best equipment and armor we have to offer, with the swordsmen fully covered in a mixture of titanium plates and mail, and an alloyed shield strapped to their back for when they may need it. The remainder of the platoon are outfitted in similar armor as their roles allow, to protect them to the highest level possible without impairing their function. Our troops have been considered the might of the galaxy and have never faced such difficulty as we have seen in trying to invade the human world. For the first few months, each and every landing we attempted was successful. Each ship landed cleanly and without incident at our target location, 
and we were met by a diplomat who requested we discuss peace and wished to understand how they had offended us so terribly that we chose to declare war. Each time we executed the diplomat, each time the ship vanished from our crystal cum network within seconds of the execution. It took us a year to understand that the ceremonial military escort that had accompanied the diplomat was, without exception, armed with a cohort of battle mages. The moment we unleashed our violence, they unleashed theirs without restraint, reducing our ships to scrap. We were baffled by this, as our scans from high altitude had still failed to reveal to us any locus of magical forces. We could not find any nexus point that would betray the location of wizards of any sort to us, let alone a concentration of battle wizards who, surely, were training more of their kind in face of our invading fleet. The humans, it seems, were far more excellent at their stealth veils than any race we have ever encountered, or their magicians were so few that they had to preserve them in secret facilities, or both. After a year of failures, we began to launch covert landings in an attempt to establish a foothold on their world. We were certain, if we could complete a tellering, that our mass invasion would quickly overrun their military forces, and the number of battle mages we could deploy would easily overpower the responding force the humans could provide. Victory would be ours, if only we could get a tellering constructed. Each landing, successfully as they were, did not yield the results we desired, but it did gather extremely powerful intelligence for us. Every confrontation with the humans went the same way. Our archers would fire volley after volley, sometimes eliminating a few of their individual soldiers, but never penetrating their hewling armored beasts. While the arrows were in flight, our battle mage would conjure illusions or shields or even make use of the kaboom spell to distract the humans so that our spearmen and swordsmen could advance within range. Then the humans, all of the humans, would release hundreds, sometimes thousands of mini kaboom spells in our direction. Each one used to push a tiny projectile at us. These projectiles, flung by a kaboom, ripped through our armor. Some of them shredded through trees and various other obstacles to wound our soldiers. Only a strong, magical shield, thrown up by the battle mage, using all of their power, was enough to stop the onslaught of the little projectiles. But it was enough, at least until they unleashed the larger kabooms. A single kaboom released from any of the armored beasts passed through the strongest magical shield any mage was able to product, and the mage was, quite simply, not there any longer. Those around the mage were, inevitably, covered in gore as the mage was reduced to component pieces. The shield would fall and the rain of projectiles would resume until our soldiers were all dead or had retreated into the ship and evacuated the encounter. Sometimes, though, evacuation by ship was not a path to safety. The humans, it seems, have harnessed air elementals, not for only for commerce and civilian transport, but also for military purposes, and those aircraft are also equipped to deploy stored kaboom spells at us. For every ten craft we landed on their world, only one would return to orbit, and it was always barely staffed and badly damaged. For the past five years, we have continued in this manner, landing ships and engaging the humans, only to be shredded by their flagrant and excessive use of the kaboom spell in strength levels varying from the tiniest, most delicate use to spells large enough to obliterate entire landing craft in one shot. For five years, we have witnessed their use of the kaboom spell propelling projectiles at use from a distance. I am reporting to you now, though, that things have changed. Our last invasion effort sent double the force. It consisted of two motherships, each with the requisite 24 landing craft, each with the two platoons to deploy on their world. 
the humans broadcast a message to us, demanding we cease our hostilities and leave, or they would be forced to demonstrate weaponry beyond our comprehension, even greater than anything we could imagine, against one of the two motherships. Our response was for one of the ships to deploy its entire invasion fleet at once. As the 24 landing craft descended through their atmosphere, a single magically inert projectile was hurled from the face of their world at us using one of their kaboom spells. The spell was long burning rather than the usual immediate and fierce instant explosion, and it propelled the object upward at a rate that seemed quite lazy compared to the projectiles they deployed against our ground forces. We watched from the empty mothership as it approached the full mothership. We chuckled and laughed, knowing that at its speed it would merely bounce off the hull of the vessel and fall back to Earth, burning upon re-entry into their atmosphere. But then it happened. The biggest kaboom we have ever witnessed. The other mothership was no longer there, and within seconds our ship was pelted by debris fragments, created massive breaches in our hull that allowed nearly half of our atmosphere to vent into space before we could close all of the pressure doors. Half of our elementals were purged from our ship, leaving only inoperable controls. About half of our landing craft returned to our ship, the remainder being destroyed before they could do anything further. Those that returned informed us that they have received a message from the humans, being broadcast on all frequencies at us. It informed them that that was the smallest of our nuclear missiles. It was only one. We have tens of thousands ready to be deployed should you return, and we will be launching a fleet to carry many of them to your world. You have been warned. Your surrender is expected upon our arrival. We do not wish to drop such weapons against your homeworld. As the captain of the surviving ship from that encounter, I must implore you. Surrender to the humans. They may only know how to use the Kaboom spell in combat, but they have mastered it beyond any levels that we can imagine. They have tolerated this war long enough and are now fed up with us. Clearly they were toying with us this entire time, allowing us to weaken our forces before choosing to invade our world. Perhaps if we surrender, they will have mercy upon us in a way that we did not show them. Perhaps if we surrender, they will be satisfied with the end of the war rather than annihilating us for daring to challenge them. Perhaps they are better than we in this manner, and this war is a lesson we should learn from this fledgling race, for it was our hubris that led to our current situation.